Hey y'all, so before I get irritated that I literally just recorded this video already and it's gone, where it says cannot play it back for whatever reason, I'm gonna just go ahead and record it, like just get right back into it because I'm already in the mood, you know. As you can tell by the title of this video, I will be giving some do's and don'ts of starter locks. Why am I qualified to give you these? Because I am Courtney Grayton. I'm a loctician, natural hair stylist, specialist, and owner of Furrow Tree Natural Hair Products. So clearly, natural hair is my thing. I also recently, about four months ago to be exact, started my own starter locks. Well, I didn't start them, but you know, I started my journey. So I'll just give you some tips that I give my clients on a day-to-day -day basis as I start their locks and maintenance their locks, but then also just share some things that I'm doing along my journey. I have it on my phone, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So first, you want to make sure that you are not using heavy products. With locks, you want them to be as light and kind of fluffy and movable as possible. That just means that they're not heavy and weighed down. Mine are a little stiff right now because I just had them in a the style, so they're like stretched out and just want to stay where they are. You definitely want them to be light and fluffy. The main thing is because you don't want to have product buildup. You want to definitely have a healthy foundation and starting with heavy locks creates product buildup in the beginning that is very hard to kind of remove moving forward. Definitely don't want to get in the habit of using heavy products, especially not anything like beeswax or anything like that to retwist. I think we're past the days of people using beeswax, but I want to make that very clear as well. And then there are some very heavy butters that you kind of want to stray away from if they do not melt completely down. I actually use a butter on some of my clients, but that butter melts way down to the lightest weight oil it's fine for me to use because as soon as my client goes under the dryer it kind of melts down and they don't have to worry about the product buildup but in the beginning you definitely do not want any heavy products stay away from them and if you see that your stylist or your loctician is using a heavy product make sure that they can explain to you why they're using that product and not just because it makes it look neat locks can be neat and also very unhealthy so I'm all about health over neatness, and so that's what I will always be about on this channel. And yeah. Next, you definitely do not want to wash as normal. So I know when you have loose hair, typically you're washing every week, every two weeks. So you want to push that out. You also don't want to be washing, you know, how you would normally kind of scratch around. I typically tell my clients to wait at least four weeks, especially after first starting. You want to wait four weeks. So just allow your locks to do its thing. Allow some of those loose hairs to start to kind of form and bud just a little bit. Not a lot happens in that first four weeks, but you definitely want to leave it alone and not add any water in the mix to reverse some of the work that you just did with starting your locks. It's just counterproductive to the starting the lock process. And you also don't want to deep condition as most deep conditions are designed to detangle. Uh, it's okay to just wash your hair, shampoo, and then condition right after and then rinse it right out. You definitely don't want to let that conditioner sit, and especially not under the dryer because it will literally do what it's supposed to do, which is detangle your hair. Next, you definitely don't want to retwist too often. I tell my clients to come in four weeks. Some of them may whine about coming in a little earlier and in special circumstances, maybe I've had clients with like caked up dandruff and stuff like that. And in that case, you know, when you have an actual like issue that needs to be resolved, you definitely want to play it by ear with your loctician. As much as possible, do not retwist your hair sooner than four weeks. That just helps to allow your locks to thicken up as they're supposed to without a whole lot of manipulation. You want to leave them alone as much as possible. And that kind of just goes right into my next and last don't, which is tight styling. So I do recommend getting styles on starter locks, but you definitely don't want any styling that's tight. I see locticians online, their hair is very neat, but you can look at that scalp until that is way too tight. It just creates too much tension and stress on your scalp. It's already getting used to you having a different style. You don't want to also throw tight maintenance in the mix. Sometimes, and a lot of times, tight maintenance and tight styling creates damage that is almost irreversible. You typically have to then wait until it grows out and then try to patch it up and, you know, repair and things like that. So it's best to just not do those things so that you don't have to go back and do a lot of work on the back end. I'm gonna go right into the do's. These are things, like I said, that I tell my clients when I give them the rundown after I just started their locks. These are things that I tell them. I definitely 
one of the main things is that you want to tie your hair down at night. This is essential and imperative for a few reasons. First is to decrease the amount of lint that you have in your hair. So locks they tend to pick up lint pretty fast. Lint and dirt and all those things. Now the dirt part you will get out as you shampoo but lint is a lot harder to remove. Tying your hair in a satin or silk scarf at night will definitely eliminate the amount of lint that you're getting in your hair from your blankets, from your, you know, pillows and other things like that, carpet, whatever you may be laying on. Just tie your hair up. It also helps to decrease the amount of breakage that you have due to dryness. So those fabrics suck all of the moisture out of your hair and lead to breakage. So I know it's easy to forget to add a scarf at night sometimes, but once you get in the habit of doing it, it kind of feels weird to not have a scarf on. So I'm at a place now that when I lay down on my pillow, if I don't have a scarf on, it feels weird because I'm used to having a scarf tying my head down when I lay down at night. So you definitely want to find a lightweight oil. It allows you to be able to moisturize your hair more often. If you want to put oil on your hair every day, it's perfectly fine and you'll be able to kind of use that daily or every other day until you go back and get your hair washed. Some lightweight oils that I recommend, peppermint oil, jojoba oil, almond oil are really good and the ultimate oil that has everything that you could possibly need in it while still being lightweight is the Ooh Baby oil from My Hair Care Line Fragrance Tree that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, this oil is packed with a lot of essential oils in it. I will not go down the ingredient list but I'll leave the ingredients down below. But things like basil, passion flower, lavender essential oil, rosemary. These are herbs that'll help stimulate hair growth. So this oil helps with growth, but it's also extremely moisturizing. Your hair holds onto this oil and gives it shine. Um, two oils that I definitely would not recommend that I hear a lot of my clients say that they, you know, have heard people say is coconut oil and olive oil. Those are oils that are good when mixed with other oils and other products, but on their own, they're definitely not enough. I find that both of them may appear to be moisturizing in the beginning, but they pretty much leave your hair worse off because it's a lot drier. It just doesn't get the job done. So let me know if you want a, another video that goes more in depth on different oils and, you know, things like that you definitely want to wash with a cap or a band and this pretty much applies to people who wash their own hair if you go to a loctician that person will wash your hair the best way that they know how to preserve the locks that they started but if you're washing your hair at home find a video on youtube that shows either washing with the wig cap method or banding method and those videos will explain to you a lot better and in more detail why they work and why you should do that but it just helps in general to reduce the amount of unraveling that you experience with your locks in the beginning. Next one is very important. I end up telling my clients this usually after they realize the effects of not doing this. Typically a lot of them don't understand until their hair has already done this and they're in my chair and it's a little painful. A lot of times in this back area where you kind of lay down or you might lean or something, a lot of these, these locks back here and kind of all over but mostly back here, they'll start to merge together just because you have loose hair, you have frizz and it kind of doesn't really know where to go unless it's like in a style and just already separate but if you're wearing your hair out like this some of your locks will tend to try over time to merge together so you can do this weekly every other week kind of depending on how often this happens for you or you can do it right before you come into the salon just go through and separate your hair your locks at the root so that you don't have a whole lot of tugging and pulling when it's time to get the retwist this is kind of debated amongst people, but I typically recommend and, you know, my co-workers, we all recommend people getting styles with Starter Lock. It helps to keep your hands out of your hair like this and it also helps keep your parts intact. It helps to just leave your hair alone and give, you know, make it give you as low maintenance as possible during this journey where you're kind of getting used to this whole new look. You're getting used to a whole new regimen. So leaving your hair in a style makes it very easy to moisturize. Just put it on top, spray something, and you're pretty much good to go. That's one thing, but then it also just helps to reduce the amount of work that needs to be done later. Your locks don't unravel if they're in a style. They just stay put. But you want to make sure that those styles are not tight. 
if your hair is too short to get a style comfortably then just don't get the style i always recommend health over the look health over snatched it just helps in the long run when you've waited and you're able to try all these styles later down the line because you have healthy locks because you didn't try to do it too soon be patient and allow your locks to grow healthy and thick tight styles will literally do the opposite they tend to thin your hair out lastly i just want to say to embrace the journey this has been something that i'm constantly telling myself as well i've been natural for a while i teach people how to be more comfortable with their natural hair but starting a new lock journey i found myself reminding myself to embrace the journey just like i did with filming this video with my hair kind of all over the place i could have really did something where i tried to slick it down stick my edges and lay them down and everything like that but this is what locks are and i um, know that one day i'm going to look back and remember having starter locks and maybe even miss this stage a little bit so i want to embrace the journey as it is i love my locks the way that they are um, even though i'm excited to see where they go i love them the way that they are and I, that's what i really recommend for you to embrace the journey is definitely different but from a lot of people that i know who have locks that are way down their back who have had them for seven eight nine years they sometimes miss the starter lock phase and they wish that they had loved it while they could a lot of people kind of try to hide their locks, but I would encourage you to embrace the neat period, embrace the not so neat periods. Every piece of the journey is supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen. You know, I'm not even about to preach right now, but y'all know what I'm saying. And that's about it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment below if there's anything in this video that you would like me to expound on. I'm definitely open to creating videos specifically for any of these. I love that my channel is growing. Um, I'm excited to see where this goes in 2021. I'm trying to be as consistent as possible. And I appreciate anyone who decides to join me on this journey. Yeah. Y'all have a good one. Follow me on Instagram too. Because it's fun over there.